So I'm generating a really, really weak test signal here in the lab so we can uh, do this under much better conditions than normal. And uh, as you can see, I've got it on this turntable. Now what I'm going to do now, the uh, signal is about 86, 87% there. I'm going to start turning this antenna on this turntable and hopefully you'll be able to see what the problem actually is. Now I'm trying to do this as slow as possible. But what you'll end up seeing is that signal going up and down like a roller coaster as I keep turning it. The slower that I do this, the better effect you'll see on the screen. So that's the problem I've got then, as you actually rotate this antenna, the signal goes up and down, you can clearly see it even in my uh, lab here, and I'm pretty sure that a company like Cisco would have done uh, quite a lot of uh, testing with their antenna, and uh, you know, if you've got access to an anechoic chamber, and uh, all the test data that Cisco must have submitted to the FCC to actually get approval for that antenna. They must uh, have known about it. The design team must have come across that uh, problem as they were actually testing the antenna itself. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you a fix that I've come up with that you can actually do to modify the uh, driven element itself. So when you do rotate this uh, antenna, you won't get that uh, dipping because uh, it is a, an omnidirectional antenna. And uh, as such, you should expect the uh, donut shape, the uh, radiation pattern of this antenna to be the same in all 360 directions, not uh, dipping down and dipping up in uh, one particular direction. So to help improve the signal strength of this antenna in its full 360 degrees, what I'm gonna do is um, I've cut this part of a uh, second driven element here, cut it off here because I don't need the uh, loading coil, etc. And I'm going to cut this in half and basically solder the two halves onto uh, this driven element here just uh, to create uh, two fins either side. Now because this is not double sided board so I can't solder onto this side what I'm going to have to do is cut through some uh, vias through here so I can actually solder the second half to this side of the board. So I'm going to use some copper wire and I'm going to drill probably uh, around five, maybe six holes down the center of this, feed the copper wire through, and then I can use that as a uh, connection and also support. So I can put uh, a second half of the element on this side of the board. So I'm about to solder on the uh, first half of one of the uh, sides of the driven element. So I've got it all held in place with masking tape against this block of wood here. So it's a, a nice right angled uh, side to actually uh, hold the PCB itself. And uh, I've chopped down the uh, vias so none of the vias actually protrude uh, further than the actual edge of the driven element. That's really important. So what I'm going to do is get in with the soldering iron and just flow some solder in there so uh, this half of the uh, element will be attached. So the first half is soldered in there so I'm just going to do the same with the uh, second half on the opposite side and then I'll get in there with the uh, sanding drum on the Dremel and try and tidy it all up a little bit. So I've got both wings attached to the uh, main driven element now so hopefully that'll do the job and it'll work much better. Now what you can also do is do what I've done here and uh, print off the artwork and uh, glue it down onto some uh, scrap tin and cut it out and then you can solder both of these together. So I've got the two elements cut out of that tin and I've cleaned them up a little bit so I can actually solder to them and I've put two cuts halfway, one coming up from the bottom to the middle and one coming down from the top to the middle so they can now fit inside each other and then we can solder those two halves together. So I've got that main driven element finished off, I've just tacked it in there with some solder, it's not going to go anywhere now and uh, I've cut away a little bit of the base of one of them so I've got these two 
little uh, tags here right at the end and uh, this is what's left of the uh, main driven element for the uh, first modification that I did so I actually cut the top part off this one because it does have a little uh, split in the trace there so I'm going to use this one but I'm going to have to flood that with solder to repair that trace otherwise we'll have no electrical contact here with the uh, main driven element but those two little tags there should just uh, solder quite nicely on there so two methods then for the modification I think uh, this one is uh, probably the neatest out of the two but they should both work just uh, exactly the same and uh, at the end of the day when they're in the tube you're not going to see them anyway so now I've added that modification to the antenna we'll just let the signal settle down a little bit and then we'll run that test again so I'm going to move it around like I did first time and hopefully we're not going to see any of those uh, big dips and troughs and peaks again So I'm moving it nice and slowly just like before and that signal is staying pretty steady around 85%. So I've got a nice big block of red there now. So it looks like that modification has uh, made this antenna perform even better than before so I'm pretty pleased with that. So hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you did please give it a thumbs up it does help here on YouTube and uh, any uh, questions or comments drop them below I do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.